Hello, good evening, guten tag, and bon we from Is It Fast? We are back once again like a renegade master to show you all things fast, speedy, sleek, and in my co-presenter's case, sexy. How are we doing Ooh. this lovely evening, other Stu? Oh, what an introduction, Stu. I'm doing very well, thanks. And once again, great to be back. Delighted to be in our now normal time slot, 7pm on a Wednesday. Yes. If anybody missed the news, uh, the previous four or five live podcasts were a pilot series, and we have been given a second series, and we have a pilot no more. We are fully-fledged spacemen, which we will come back to later in the show, mm. but we now have a regular time slot of 7 p.m. Central British time on a Wednesday. The stories today, if you're tuning in, what can you expect to hear? Well, there is an updated Dacia duster. The Honda NXS, N NXS has a band from of the 80s. The Honda NSX hypercar is getting a final hoorah. What on Ocon happened in the F1? This and much, much more right here on Is It Fast this evening. So plenty to get into. But before we get into any of that, some of you will have noticed that we do have a little orange heart in the corner of our screens today. And that is for a very good reason. Unfortunately, this weekend just passed a marshal. Uh, uh, a chap by the name of Robert Foote, uh, unfortunately lost his life doing what he loves uh, at Brands Hatch. And just want to say from everybody here at Is It Fast to the entire Marshall community, the fraternity of the Orange Army that allow all of us as spectators, as competitors, racers, racetracks and circuits around the world, uh, they allow us to do and watch and be part of what we love. So uh, huge amounts of condolences go out to, to Robert's family and to the entire Orange Army. Thanks for doing what you do. We really appreciate it. So, yeah, absolutely. Robert uh, was simply a passionate racing fan, much like ourselves, who enjoy being tracked, said, given back to the sport you loved. Um, uh, we, uh, we're, all, we're all thinking of you. I'm very grateful to everyone who goes out and um, takes part, gives up their weekend so so we can kind of sit here and talk about this kind of stuff. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thoughts and prayers go out to to him and his, and his family. So, uh, but unfortunately, we must move on with the news. So first this week, we look at what has become a bit of a, a cult in the world of the uh, the motoring fraternity. And we have news this week that the Dacia Duster has been given a bit of an upgrade. So available to order right now, you can get this ever so slightly facelifted uh, Dacia Duster. So you can get one of these starting from £13,995. Pounds, and that is in what we like to call entry-level essential trim, uh, ensuring that it keeps its position as one of the most affordable SUVs on sale in the UK. Now, Dacia, uh, I'm not going to say that the whole thing is built from the bin from Renault, but it is essentially cobbled together by Renault. And over the years, however, it has started to look pretty good. You can upgrade it for more money. That's right. If you spend more money, you can get more cars. So for 15495 quid, you can get yourself the comfort trim. So electric mirrors, front fog lights, a hill descent control, and an eight-inch touchscreen with smartphone mirroring functionality. And the range-topping Duster Prestige. Uh, well, that comes in at 16,695 quid with larger 17-inch alloys, privacy glass, automatic air conditioning, uh, keyless entry, and heated seats. And if you have a quick look at the front, it now has a new front end with Y headlights. So you can kind of see them there. They look a little bit like a Volvo, but now it looks like the upgraded Dacia Sandero that came out earlier in the year. What do we think of the Dacia Duster? You, you know what? A surprise hit back for a sequel. The, the, the kind of, yeah. It always <laughs> amazed me. Um, I, I genuinely just wonder what Queen's song they're going to use this time because they had another one by the Dutcha last time. I they think did. Dutcha Stop Me Now. I hmm. think that could work really well. Um, it is amazing, though, that you were talking about the comfort level. There's even an essential level before this. So basically, I think you get seats and wheels. Um, yep. It's kind of a little bit like buying a charm bracelet for the missus. 
it's never going to be complete. You're just going to have to keep adding and adding to this every time. Um, <laughs> try to try to figure, sit here and figure out what you're actually getting, depending on what kind of level, essential, comfort, prestige. DAB radio, Bluetooth connectivity, voice recognition, USB sockets, they are all available, and it does start to add up. The one that really, really, really made me laugh, though, has to be you can get a spare wheel added for 250 quid. That's a, that's a lot of wheel for 250 quid. <laughs> it, it really is, because if you just bought the essential version, it doesn't come with a spare. That 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 kind of makes me laugh a little bit. Does that um, boggle your mind? It, it does a little bit. It's a bit like walking down the high street and some um, a homeless person says, do you have any spare change? Well, like spare change, like a spare tire, like in case I need it. Yeah, in case you need it, you will need the spare wheel at some point. <laughs> we've, we've all been on the motorway finding a screw embedded into one of your wheels. Um, but you know what? The upholstery inside looks a lot better as well. It's no frills, but you know what you're getting. This won a lot of kind of what car type awards as well. So, yeah, Look kind of that. what's not to like about it. I agree. I think, so Dacia, the famous Romanian, it's probably not pronounced Dacia. That's because I'm being all Italian about it. It's probably Dacia because it's a Romance language, Romanian. So the C's are slightly calmer. There you go. Linguistics and cars all in one show. Uh, the Yeah, the Dutch, I, I think it's great. I think you, you need these cars. In fact, this show has a little bit of the value added. I mean, I say that. There's also things that are worth hundreds of thousands of pounds coming up on this show tonight. But there's, there's, there's a value add in there, trust me. Um, but we need these kind of cars. You know, comfortable, reliable. Ch- I say cheap. I mean, £14,000 is not a small amount of cash. Um, but it's 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 needed. Not everyone's going to run around and you know buy a Bentley for Christ's sake. So it's um, you can go needed. out and buy a brand new car for under fifteen grand. Yes. you should be under no real illusions. Yes, it's not going to be a Bentley. It's not going to be um, the, the the new Mercedes or something like that. But you are getting a reliable, good car, which you, you see plenty of them round about don't you? Yeah, 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 loads of them, loads of them. So there you go. The Dacia Duster from Dacia, ever so slightly upgraded from the old model, and as Stu rightly says, Dacia stop me now, because it looks like these guys are on a roll, but tell us in the comments what do you think of the ever so slightly upgraded Dacia Duster? But from French Romanian cars, we move ever so subtly but ever so meaningfully into the world of motorsports. We're going to dip in and out today, but a very well done to this chap. Hi, I'm Daniel Robotham, racing the British Touring Car Championship with Team Dynamics, and you're watching Is It Fast? Yes, that's right. A huge well done to Daniel Robottom, uh, who we forced to do that link back in February. Uh, But he is no longer just racing in the British Touring Car Championship uh, for Team Dynamics and that Honda Civic Type R. He is now a race winner in the British Touring Car Championship. And now what Daniel doesn't realize is that he's continuing a very well-trodden path uh, nay, a legendary path of drivers who have appeared on Is It Fast and gone on to have hugely successful careers or podiums slash wins. So you are bloody welcome, D Robottom, for heading across and winning that. So we take full credit here at Is It Fast for your entire career from henceforth, unless you do something silly or bad, in which case we had nothing to do with it, mate. Uh, but well done, Dan. Uh, it was quite the weekend in the British Touring Car Championship. Uh, at Alton Park, many, many red flags, lots and lots of races, uh, probably not going the length that they should have done. Our very own friend of the show, Bradley Gravitt, managed to get about five laps under his belt with a, three or four people ending up on their roofs. Thankfully, everybody was okay. Uh, and we saw Senna Proctor uh, coming home with a victory there as well, as well as obviously Dan Rowbottom. And uh, yeah, just a, a great weekend touring car-wise all round. I don't know if you managed to catch any of it, Stu, but it was uh, 
pretty good. Managed to pick up on a little bit of it. Yeah, just with that victory, he's now kind of leapt into a bit of title contention because yeah. he's always been that there and thereabouts. And it shows just how tight things are. Really exciting series um, as well. Uh, you're absolutely correct. We should be taking full credit for uh, Dan's success. Um, <laughs> if he doesn't acknowledge us, uh, we're going to be very, very bitter. And we might even publish all the outtakes. Uh, uh, oh, oh we, we have a few. Uh, but go. yes, no, we do take full credit. But well done. Yes, he is now third in the championship. Um, yeah. and, and like all the drivers that have ever appeared on this show, we wish everybody the best of luck. But when they come home with a podium or a victory, uh, we, we feel good for you. We feel good. So well done. Yeah. Um, well done to everybody. And well done to, uh, to everybody else during the course of that weekend at Alton Park. Quick one, though, as well. He managed to hold on for the remaining six laps with mm. great, great pressure from his own teammates. So it was a very skilled drive. He didn't just kind of um, yeah. get there to um, kind of, oh, yeah, I've avoided the crash. Look at me go. He still had to put a heck of a lot of work in. But race teammates, how does that work? Like, is that an awkward Monday morning at the water cooler saying, uh... oh, you didn't let me pass, you massive git? It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, his yeah. teammates not not successful. I think he's he's a four time British touring car champion, Gordon yeah. Flash Shedden, um, for Faith. Well, I don't know if he's from Fife actually, but it's just really good to say. Um, so yeah, I can imagine there's probably a little bit of co healthy competition. And if your teammate being the four time British touring car champion isn't enough, your boss is three time touring car champion Matt Neal. So it's I mean, there's pressure there, but he's handling it super super well so that's really good news so tell us in the comments how have you been enjoying this year's british touring car championship to date but from touring cars on this island we move to touring cars in somewhere else so the european touring car championship uh, took place this weekend as well at spa francochamps in belgium we saw michael as Connor become the first double champion of the year. So he won race one and two in his Seat Leon, sorry, Cooper Leon, uh -oh, competizione. Um, but it doesn't tell the whole story. So it, there was offs and all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff there. We can see the peloton of cars heading towards Eau Rouge. One of the best tracks in the, in the world, Spa. Absolutely love it. Um, plenty of action. If you haven't watched the highlights, go back and watch it. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, a shout out to one of my favorite racers in the whole wide world as well, Mr. Tom Coronel. You don't know who I am, mate, but we know who you are and we love you. Just such a great, there's his car there, suffered a bit of damage there. It didn't have the weekend he probably would have wanted to have, um, but just such a personality. And if you follow him on social media, it gives you all sorts of behind the scenes lovelies when it comes to his racing career and also the TCR Europe. So, yeah, pretty good weekend of racing at Spa, uh, other than the second race starting under the safety car because of the rain. But other than that, a huge congratulations to that chap there, the busiest man, the busiest man in motorsport, uh, Mr. Mikel Ascona, who is uh, possibly racing every other day of the year at the moment. Yeah. Is there, is there any discipline he can't race in? Really? <laughs> Uh, it's, well, it's preposterous, isn't it? He's just such a it, talented human being, and it makes me feel really bad about my issues. <laughs> and life in general. Yeah. Life in general we, yeah. We generally raved about the Spa Track last show, and it didn't disappoint. It was fantastic. Yeah, the, the, the podium places were relatively kind of straightforward, but as you correctly said, the battles behind were anything mm -hmm. but. There was loads of incidents. The drama continued. There was a little niggle and things like that, but that's what we want to see. Um, nothing was dangerous. It was all just kind of drivers wanting to push their cars, push themselves. Fantastic. But worth pointing out as well, there's only 20 points between the top three in the Drivers' Championship. Yeah. The, the, yeah. There's a lot still at stake here. They're, they're still going out there. Um, and, and once again, it's just great to see fans back in the stands watching this kind of stuff. Get, getting involved uh, is brilliant. Life is returning. Yes, I would agree with that. I think it's um, one of the tightest championships. I've, I've been loving European TCR uh, this season. I think it's, it's, it's just super tight racing. There's so many talented uh, individuals in there. And, and as you say, the, uh, the fans are returning slowly but surely. So, uh, so yeah, tell us in the comments, are you a touring car fan? And if so, do you watch the European TCR series or do you watch any other TCR 
as well. We were lucky enough to have TCR UK on Is It Fast this year, and it is and continues to be some of the best racing that you can find. But if you're into your motorsport, if you're into your racing and you want to think to yourself, or you think to yourself, I oh, just want to know when my favorite championship is on. Or when, sure, when. When, when, when. when? Or what, what happened in my favorite championship? I need to know what happened and who did well. Well, there is something out there for you, and it looks a little bit like this. Results Hub. All motorsport results, all in one place. And now there's an app. Take results with you on the go as we bring you the latest standings from championships around the world. And there's more. Use the app to see who is racing and where with our handy calendar feature. Download the app now. Results Hub. All motorsport results, all in one place. All motorsport results, all in one place, thanks to our friends at Results Hub. Just all you need. It's just the only app you need. And go and download it on your iOS device, preferably a phone, uh, now. And you can keep up with all motorsport results, all in one place. I highly recommend it. I use it nearly every day. So, uh, so there you go. It is a surefire way to keep up to date with everything you need. Shall we move on to something extraordinarily expensive? Oh, go on then. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, something extraordinarily expensive. Two Dacha. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you call two Dacha in a row? Go on. Dacha. Uh, <laughs> it might come as a surprise to you that I made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so moving on to something very expensive, something that didn't sell in the UK and something that you can't buy here. Yes, this is, <laughs> I'm really selling this, the brand new Honda NSX. So the Honda NSX will be bowing out from 2022, but they released a new Type S hardcore version to celebrate the fact that this hybrid V6 supercar will be no more. The full car will be revealed in around about a week or two. But in the meantime, Honda showed us these images just to show us just kind of what we've been missing. So we don't know what the performance figures for this new NSX Type S will be, but we can imagine it will have the three and a half litre V6 that exists obviously in the current nsx but instead of pumping out 573 brake horsepower it's far more likely that it will be nearer 600 horsepower uh, they're going to make 350 of these nsx type s's just for the world 30 of them is definitely going to japanese customers it won't be coming to the uk as the nsx basically wasn't sold here after 2020 which is why in these images it's essentially badged as an acura which is the other name for performance Hondas around the world, predominantly in the United States of America. So there we go. Useless consumer news for you there. Here's a car you can't buy and probably won't be able to. And if you could, it's more than 170 grand, which is what the NXS cost before. Thoughts? It, <laughs> it's very teaser, isn't it? Um, yeah. This is kind of all they're giving us so far. It's looking like something at a Blade Runner. Um, all yeah. the, the kind of the red things like that, but the the, the stills of it, great exterior, black trim, uh, the red brake calipers, the S type badge is very cool. It's it's water in the mouth here. Um, something that didn't really make me laugh though. Uh, each will be given a numbered uh, build plaque for you to hang in your garage or whatever. But it made me think <laughs> of like getting a, a Royal Dalton plate from your granny that she bought on the TV shopping. Uh, and this will be your inheritance, whether you want it or not. But you actually do want this car. Yet, if you're watching us in the UK, sorry, guys, I think we're out of luck. Yeah, I never really understood the, the NSX and how it didn't take off. I mean, it was very expensive and still a Honda. So I get that. But the original NSX was, I mean, and the new NX, new X, NXS, a great car. Old NSX from the 90s just an amazing machine the difference being senna <laughs> Ayrton <laughs> senna drove the original nsx and there's a great video of him healing healing and towing in it spanking it around a racetrack in his loafers it's a great video i probably should have got it for this but it's um it's inc it's incredible but yeah there you go um a very sexy looking car uh for no one no one's gonna no one's really gonna get it it'll be a very few number of people that will get their hands on that, which is a bit of a shame. 
um because it is a, a a rather cool thing but what can you do what can you do but tell us in the comments what do you think of the honda nsx type s that you won't see on the roads and you won't be able to buy so from 170,000 pound plus japanese hybrid v6 motors we go to the other end of the japanese car scale <laughs> and as we got news this week from mazda that they have tweaked <laughs> ever so slightly the mazda 2. So the Mazda 2, which is their kind of mini hatch, I guess, uh, now has a range topping 113 brake horsepower engine. Now, it doesn't sound a lot, but the car is quite small. But you will be able now to order the car with a 1.5 litre Sky Active G petrol engine. And that will join the existing 73 brake horsepower option and 88 brake horsepower option from the 1st of October. Uh, so you've got new trim levels as well in there and uh, particularly uh, improved efficiency. Um, costing you just about 16 and a half grand, probably a little bit more once you've added your options. Uh, but I think, and it's this is less about the car having a uh, uh, a new engine. I think, similarly to that Dutch Dacia, it's so important that cars like this exist and that they have decent mileage, different decent costing, look good, and essentially have enough power to to get you going. That's the Mazda two. I love Mazdas, if I'm honest. I think they're great. I don't own one. I probably wouldn't own one, but I like them a lot. You, you can admire them from afar. Yes. I'm just not a big lover of Japanese cars. I don't know why. I've loved every single one I've ever driven. <laughs> With like almost bar none. <laughs> um, I just, yeah, just don't know. Just not my thing. But Yeah, something really good about it, though, um, there is going to be a sports model available. It's going to have <laughs> wireless um, Apple uh, CarPlay. And you can either Ooh. choose a manual or an automatic gearbox as well with it. Oh, but great great it, for your granny. It, absolutely perfect, yeah. She can tune in her iPhone too. Um, <laughs> I meant more the she's inherited gearbox. after all the grandchildren have kind of gone through it. Um, <laughs> you know, for me, though, I kind of get it, but it does look like a boring Ford Focus. Yeah, uh, it, it's in there, isn't it? You there, know, it's there's a of... white version of this that was earlier in the video, and I'm just going to say it's Casper the Fat Uninspired Lockdown Ghost. <laughs> it just doesn't <laughs> fill me with any kind of joy or anything like that. I get what you're saying that, yeah, these yeah. cars do need to exist, but yeah, come on, Mazda, yeah. I'm sure you could do better. They absolutely do. But the Mazda range is great. I know people, I know two people personally that own not this, but the bigger versions. I've driven miles in them. And um, in fact, I borrowed my friend's Mazda 3 for a two-week period a couple of years ago. Bloody sensational, I will say. Um, so yes, there we go. Tell us in the comments what you think of the Mazda 2 getting a brand new range topping 113 brake horsepower engine from that 1.5 litre petrol Sky Active Q. G even. Great journalism and reporting there right this is going to be awkward now as we move on to the next thing so for those who aren't aware we reported on the formula one at silverstone a little while ago a couple of weeks ago great bunch of guys the f1 we, we really great, like them great yeah. great bunch of guys at the f1 love the fia if just think you're cracking uh big up we to did. bernie Big up to Bernie. I mean, he's not there anymore, is he? Oh, uh, but he's there. He probably he's is there. there. Yeah, let's be he's honest. There. He's got his fingers in the pies. Um, so, yeah, just a bit of backstory. A couple of weeks ago, we reported on the Formula One from Silverstone, and our video was, uh, I wouldn't say legally challenged, but we had to get rid of it. <laughs> well, that portion of the video, anyway. Um, but we can't avoid it. We can't avoid. We can't, We just can't avoid the F1 this uh, this week. So, what we're going to give this a go and just see where we end up you 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 might only get to see this the ones guys so tune in this week f1 headed to hungary and what the ocon so plenty to talk about in the f1 uh but the big news story there a little pile up uh lewis hamilton <laughs> 
took off on his own at the restart after the procession was red flagged. But the biggest news I would say of all is that Esteban Ocon, the young Frenchman racing for Alpine, won the Hungarian Grand Prix. The first ever win for that young man there, Esteban Ocon, and the first ever win for the Alpine branded Grand Prix team and the first Grand Prix win for the Renault group uh, for quite a long time. So the French who were waiting 20 odd years for a Grand Prix winner uh, got two in two years. So Gasly last year and Ocon this year may well see another Frenchman on the podium later on in the year. But I thought it was one hell of a cracking Grand Prix. What did you reckon, Stu? Yeah, this race absolutely had everything. Um, chaotic, but you know what, Ocon led for much of the race. He capitalised on the retirements uh, of some more experienced drivers. Um, the chaotic start, Bottas crashing out. Um, let's be fair, he did take out some of Hamilton's risers, uh, uh, rivals. Sorry, what a teammate. Um, <laughs> yeah. Any chance it's new contract time? Hmm, oh, uh, who knows? <laughs> but I, I, I must say, you follow the F1 a little bit closer than I do. Hamilton doing that impromptu pit stop, kind of putting them all the way back. Mm. When What was that about? I, I didn't really follow. It was, it was such a... It was one of those races that is, should be the absolute poster boy for F1 because it just proves anything can, anything can happen. All sorts of weird and wonderful calls to do with the tyres. Kind of before everybody set off, it was wet. And, and looked like it was going to get wetter. So everyone started on the intermediates and then everybody turned around and went, holy crap, it's actually drying out. So they started to move on to slicks. And then obviously, as you went to turn one, <laughs> everybody KO'd. I mean, Bottas taking one for the team, um, knocking tons of people out. Vettel, however, showing that he's dangerous even with half a car. <laughs> and Ocon, as you say, kind of leading at the front. But there were so many more stories. There was Alonso down there in, in keeping Hamilton back for lap after lap, the two Williams drivers finishing in the points. And you see in the aftermath kind of George George Russell tearing up. It meant so much to him to bring points home for Williams. And of course, in typical George Russell style, <laughs> when Williams score a double points finish, Latifi finishes ahead of him. And what the hell? Tell us in the comments what you thought of that. But oh. even over team radio, George saying, You've got to prioritize Nicholas Latifi. You've got to, you've got to prioritize Nick. What a team! What a boy! So it had it did have everything. And Lewis starting on his own during that restart blew blew my crazy. little it blew my noggin. Yeah. Although to me it made sense because if he pitted when everybody else pitted to change their tires, he would hit. So because he's world champion, his garage on the pit lane is the first garage when you come in. It's an advantage given to the champion, the top constructor, right? Which is what Mercedes have been for, feels like forever. So if he'd pulled in and changed his tires, he would have been right at the back of that queue. So he would have started at the back, right? Albeit on slicks. So George Russell coming in with Williams right at the front of that pit lane, which under normal circumstances is not an advantage, <laughs> was an advantage in this case. It's one of those weird things. Um, but it was a really interesting race just in terms of performance and everything. And of course, Lewis on the podium looking visibly un unwell. Like obviously we found out later that he was carted away and tests done because obviously he was quite ill with COVID yeah. l last year. Um, so obviously, we, you know, we wish him well. You don't want to see, you don't want to see that, you know, there's a lot of, it feels like there's a lot of anti Lewis Hamilton sentiment at the moment. And I'm, I'm not particularly wedded to any one driver or one team in F1. It doesn't, you know, I, I just enjoy it as a spectacle and as a technological uh, feat of, of, of engineering, which we can all kind of enjoy. Um, but you don't want to see people crash out or unwell. And so, you know, you kind of want to... Certainly Lewis the to... Hungarian crowd were very vocal in their anti-Lewis. Now, uh, we're not here to speculate as to the why. Mm -hmm. Was it down to what happened with him and Verstappen in the previous race? That is very much divided the F1 fans. Don't know yeah. to do with Lewis's politics uh, as well. <laughs> but... It's quite hard not to get in trouble, isn't it? Because, yeah. you know, Hungarians, I've met a lot of them and they've all been lovely. I've been to Hungary and it's been great. But politically, 
they they lean a certain direction and, and obviously the F1 drivers have gotten a lot more politicized recently mm. um, or at least spoken out about it, which I think when you have a platform, you probably should stand up for what you believe in. Um, but what you believe in and what is right is often um, mm. a little bit divisive by its very nature, which is why on Is It Fast, we don't have any opinions other than opinions on these kind of things. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely it was definitely a very interesting race they've got the summer break now uh three or four weeks where they go away regroup have a look and see but i think mercedes and lewis are in a super strong position super strong position they know what they're doing from here on in and even after the race was finished the drama didn't stop sebastian vettel disqualified for an an, uh, 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 an insufficient kind of fuel sample it wasn't able to provide enough yeah. Obviously, nothing to do with him being summoned by the race stewards and not taking off his rainbow T-shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But no matter what anyone says, Vettel earned his place. He drove like the champ. I, I, it's not a rule that I was overly aware of, I've got to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's, and all of a sudden, he loses his position. And 18 points. 18 points is a heck of a lot. Well, uh, as, as this goes out, and you might correct me, but as this goes out, so... Aston Martin and and Seb Vettel's team have appealed. Yeah. And I think that appeal is pending. Although Yes, we've not heard the end of it, let's be fair. Depending when yeah. you watch this. And it's it's just the ridiculousness of some of the penalty. And I, you know, they, this I will be divisive on. The fuel sample is to check the quality of the fuel. But you need to be able to get a liter of fuel out in order to check the quality of the fuel. Parts of that rule, as I understand it, are written. Fuel quality check to make sure you're not putting in saucy fuel. Then somebody somewhere said, well, you probably need a litre of it to make sure. Now, if you can't if you can't get a litre out, it doesn't impact whether you can test it. So there's all these smarter people than me looking yeah. into it. But yes, I think um, if I was somewhat of a skeptic and a conspiracist i would say it might have something to do with him refusing to remove his rainbow t-shirt which i stand by seb i think you leave that bugger on sir absolutely wear that till you want to take it off so uh yes anyway f1 tell us what you thought of the f1 that happened this weekend with esteban Ocon bringing home his maiden victory will it be one of many will alpine go from strength to strength have you gone out and ordered an alpine a110 on the back of that result or not but we must unfortunately move on from the constant drama the constant drama that is the world of f1 onto something that Stu is very excited about aren't you mate I am, yeah. Very excited about it. I'm kind of excited about it, but like most things, I don't really understand a lot about it. So, because this is where automotive, the automotive world meets science. And so next up, we have got this. This, well, this is the Glickenhaus FCEV pickup. So this is from American firm Scuderia Cameron Glickenhaus. Sounds like something out of a movie, which Stu will go into in a minute. Uh, but they've previewed, <laughs> they have previewed uh, this hydrogen-powered pickup concept um, that they reckon will get you 600 miles, and they are hoping to complete the concept in its physical form and get it to the Baja 1000, which is an awesome race, awesome race. But Stu, I know you have a lot to say about this, so um, this is it. I, I do. I love the concept pictures for it. It genuinely looks like one of these cars that you would build on one of those crappy mobile games that you don't want to buy any credits for, uh, <laughs> where you've got time to kill. Uh, and Glickenhaus is actually James Glickenhaus, the director. Mm-hmm. He's mm-hmm. a film director. Um, probably his most famous work was with Jackie Chan, a film called The Protector, uh, set in Victorian England, centred around a spinster dowager uh, when her courting of uh, gentlemen suitors. Um, or more accurately, uh, two cops from Hong Kong going to get a rich businessman's kidnapped daughter. I can't remember which one it is. But his family all come from Wall Street money. So mm. obviously, kind of the next step at some point was going to be cars um, for it. This thing looks absolutely mental. It made its debut at uh, Goodwood Festival of Speed earlier this year. And essentially, there's going to be a road version of it um, for the firm. And they're also looking to do Le Mans as well. 
Yes. So this is this is interesting. Le Mans has gotten very sexy suddenly. It was, yeah. it, it's so these these are the Le Mans cars, uh, the uh, the WEC, the WEC hypercar uh, that they're talking about. I mean, look at this bad boy. This is mental. That's beautiful. Uh, it is beautiful. I will agree with that. Uh, it's amazing how eccentric you can be with lots of money. Um, so when we're eccentric, we're just head cases but if you've got loads of money you do stuff like this and you're a bit weird around town you're eccentric when you're minted so that's a nice uh nice turn up for the books um but yes something the, to aspire to yeah it is something to aspire to but this is um quite the uh quite the development i love how he called his company scuderia camera and glickenhaus scuderia which i believe is italian for racing so there you go it's uh I and you know what? I salute this. The world of cars and transport needs dreamers and absolute bampots like him. Um, I'm just going to wish him all the best. I, I want to see where this goes. This will be. This is one for the future for us to report on. Yeah, it's pretty. Um, it's pretty out there. Yeah, I, I hope he gets. I hope. I hope this truck gets to the Baja 1000. I hope one day we can get to the Baja 1000 because it's, it's, it's Dakar type racing through Mexico for a thousand miles or kilometers miles kilometers whatever either way it's yeah. madness uh so it'd be pretty cool to see um to see this go so there we go tell us in, <laughs> tell us in the comments what you think of the glickenhaus fcev hydrogen pickup truck with a potential range of 600 miles because it's pretty special uh so there we go but Ah, just a deep breath after that it's absolute insanity from things that move to things that move what time is it Stu? it's tiktok it's time for tiktok that's right every week we uh, you haven't got a watch on again i think that's like three weeks in a row i've not had a watch on to do tiktok i didn't want to say anything out. But um, I thought it was like a bit, <laughs> but apparently it's not. That's right. Every week we scour the internet for the latest news when it comes to the watch world. And this week we've got something stratospheric. Emission sequence start. Engines on. Five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have liftoff at 9.34 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Ah, space stuff. Awesome. So... What you have just witnessed there is a brand new watch, a limited edition piece from Bulova. So Bulova are the American, with a Russian name, watch manufacturer, a watch manufacturer that I personally love. And I say that a lot about watch manufacturers, but this is actually a Bulova right here. I've got another couple in the bedrooms. And I tell you what, I absolutely love them and Bulova this year are celebrating 50 years 50 years of space travel so Bulova used to put watches on astronauts and send astronauts to space well NASA did but Bulova watches were on the moon they were on the moon which is cool so they are making 5,000 of these, uh, presumably to celebrate something like 50 years. They're going to be $995 each, which I think is really, really good value, like ridiculous value. Um, and they're great. They've just, they've got all these different kind of, it's, oh, I just love it. I just, I just I, I'm a big fan of Bulova. That's why I own, I own some, but I just think they look incredible. And on the back, they've got a little spaceman engraved, sat on the moon. It's just amazing. I love this watch. I love it. The, this is beautiful. You and I don't often see fully eye-to-eye watches. We found this on TikTok. But <laughs> yes. 
that this is when uh, we are in total agreement. It's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, part of the 1971 Apollo 15 mission, Commander David Scott is still with us. He's 89 year old now, and he was the seventh astronaut to walk on the moon. But bringing it back to all things motorized vehicles, he was the first man to drive the famous lunar moon buggy. There you go. So there he is on the surface. This is an absolute thing of beauty. Um, I'm really hoping this is you starting to organize it as at Fast Secret Santa. Um, <laughs> that's going to be fun with two of us. Um, and something worth noting as well, that the original uh, Bolvo, um that was um, on um, David Scott's wrist on the moon sold an auction at 2015 for $1.625 million dollars oh. and it is the only known moonwatch to be in a private collection we don't know who bought it it was bought by somebody very anonymous and very rich with it yeah but the the, the reproduction one yeah five thousand under a thousand dollars that is a beautiful thing so this is i'm gonna get on a bit of a i know time but it's the, your show. The, well, this is true. The quality of the watch that you get. Now, I'm not saying that if you buy a watch for £10,000, £100,000, a million pound, I'm not saying that you're not getting quality for that. But we're kind of taught that you need, you know, the, the more you pay, the better the watch you get, right? I'm yet to find a brand in that bracket, the 200 to £600 pound that I enjoy as much and feel as special wearing a Bulova. Like I love them. I only buy them for myself when something happens significantly. So they're kind of my reward watch, which is, you know, because it's not too expensive. I think, Oh Jesus, that's a bit, that's a bit much. I'm going to have to try and <laughs> negotiate my way out of why I've spent this much money on myself, but they're beautifully crafted. I've never had one go wrong. They're, they look great you know they they they're just, they're just great and i think as you say to have a watch like this to have a an anniversary special edition for less than a thousand dollars commemorating something so cool is uh, uh, do you know what hats off i think they've done a cracking job i love everything about it um i'm very tempted <laughs> i'm very very tempted um i love i love them yeah i just think it's great so well done to you. First of all, you're very lucky that your missus doesn't watch us because um, she will <laughs> then not be overly surprised when any watch turns up. Um, but that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you you know what? Um, a, a quote from a fantastic TV show, Parson Rec, treat yourself. Exactly. Treat yeah. yourself. It is time to say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching, listening, or just having us on in the background. Remember, if you liked what you've watched or listened to, follow us on your social media platform of choice. If you're bored and on the internet, don't, don't go on those weird websites. Head over to isitfast.co.uk and have a little peruse around where you can buy things from people like Umbro, which would really help us out. What better time to buy some Williams gear f1 gear from umbro then go into their website directly from is it fast helps us helps you so that's all good news remember to stay tuned as we have massively massively exciting news coming up huge amounts of news coming up uh, in fact it's so annoying we can't tell we literally this can't like, this, <laughs> this is the worst thing people are gonna think oh yeah yeah of course we've got something big coming up yeah Stuart got a new stapler yeah how exciting but <laughs> No, we, we really do. I've got massive news coming up. We cannot wait to break this news. Uh, we're just dotting the T's and crossing the I's. It's going to be fantastic, guys. We we are entering something. It's going to be oh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be amazing. We have on top of this thing we can't talk about. Uh, we have live. We have live motorsport throughout the rest of this year. We have highlights from some of the biggest championships across the world. Original, informative programming where we fanny about with cars and other stuff <laughs> but most of all thank you to everybody that continues to support watch share comment and do all those other lovely things like subscribe to is it fast but for another week 
on this most generic of motor and automotive podcasts. It's goodbye from me. And it's a goodbye from me. Bye bye.